you so much. And now I uh, the floor to, to Mr. Juha Eskelinen from Helsinki Uusima Regional Council. Yeah, I'm Juha Eskelinen. I'm the, the director of regional development in the in the Helsinki Uusima region. And uh, I hope you everybody Gien Dobri. Uh, good morning, <laughs> hyvää huomenta. Uh, I'm I'm sitting in the in the city of Hyvinkä, it's roughly about 60 kilometers from uh, north from Helsinki, and I have this special studio here. Uh, it's very nice to to hear you and to see you. I, and as said uh, recently, unfortunately not in live, not face to face, but uh, via this technical machine. Uh, the call of uh, of the Europe to be the first climate neutral continent is uh, very important. To be the forerunner helps us also to create market opportunities for our businesses in global level. Uh, it is important that the project receiving funding in the Horizon Europe would deliver tangible and visible results. Results, new technologies sustainable solution and disruptive in disruptive innovations are critical to achieve objective of of the european green deal the cross regional research and innovation cooperation can provide more concrete solutions for green for the green deal main priorities as mentioned uh, in the in the previous speaker and accelerates the process of transferring best practices this is the important part of uh, of cross-regional uh, cooperation to, to change good practices. Cross-regional uh, RDI cooperation enables European-wide networks and brings new business contacts. Regional cooperation can also help building stronger consortia and increase the quality of applications uh, if we uh, connect it to, to it to, to training as well. Cross-border use of and this is very important from our part. You know that Helsinki Uusima region is one of the most developed regions in the in Europe, and and since we have very limited capacity of uh, resources, it, it, for us it would be and and should be important that cross border uh, that that we enable to use the cross border uh, in cross border co cooperation structural of structural of funds. Uh, and it, it should be much easier than it is at the, mo at the moment. Thank you. That's my part for that question. Okay. Thank you, Juha. And uh, next insight will come from Mr. Marcin Podgorski from Marshall's okay. office, uh, Butch. So please, uh, Mr. Podgorski, your floor is yours. Hyvää uh, huomenta. Kuinka voi? Hello, everybody. Sometimes I think these uh, meetings are uh, much better than the conferences because we can go inside our offices and then uh, this build trust. Uh, and this is, for me, the greatest opportunity. Uh, you said at the beginning, what is the greatest opportunity and how to convert this uh, opportunity of COVID into something better. If, if we care more about them, uh, about our life uh, uh, and also about the biodiversity. Uh, I see that the very important thing in every strategy uh, is the fulfilled strategy, the, the strategy that we can really deliver uh, the, the Trust is something what we can build on. And if we have this kind of conference that we can jump into our offices in the places where we stay sometimes say 10, 12 years, uh, 12 hours uh, a day. So this is a uh, something uh, where I see the opportunity uh, of uh, cooperation uh, very much. And when we, when I try to answer the question uh, on the Green Deal and Horizon uh, 2020, for me, when I uh, started uh, working in the government, uh, self-government of our uh, region, first we try to build a regional strategy. We try to find the endogenous potential. Try to find what are the opportunities outside. The next step was uh, with all Europe after uh, Dominique Fauré, Professor Fauré discovered uh, regional uh, innovation strategies. Then uh, we started to 
find our innovation strategies, our uh, specialities. Then we stepped into the entrepreneurial discovery process. Uh, we always tried to look into more us than outside, more, uh, uh, more and into our uh, potential than into the potential what is possible to create with other partners. And for me, the Green Deal and New Horizon uh, 2020, this is the opportunity. We have now systematic signal which can be delivered in all regions around the Europe with a very simple meaning, Green Deal. Everybody can remember this and then everybody, what I mean by everybody, I mean the triple helix uh, uh, stakeholders, I mean, I mean entrepreneurs and uh, administration and very important, uh, the, um, the research uh, part. So I hope this will be um, a direction uh, given by the Europe simple that we can understand and deliver this, this strategy. When we speak about the topics, the most important for, uh, for my region is uh, decarbonization. Decarbonization and here we are looking for a partnership in researchers, but also uh, how to put this uh, new knowledge into the small uh, villages. Uh, into uh, the profits of entrepreneurs and the profits uh, for our inhabitants. Um, what do we offer for cross-regional and uh, uh, R&D innovation? Our strength and, uh, in our region is um, great willingness of entrepreneurship. So it is easy in our region to find companies that which, uh, which want to implement, which want to cooperate with the uh, partners abroad. Now we are transforming into very much open economy and uh, this first uh, 15 years, 16 years in European uh, Union, when we learned about the, the common market, now we understand it much better and we are looking for better contacts. But implementation with a profit both on administration side with a better value for uh, inhabitants or entrepreneurs better profit for the businesses with the partners from outside and researcher to find better solutions for the society and all triple hands thank you uh, thank you so much Thank you. Maybe, maybe, maybe I just ask now the second question because we are just most in the, in the middle of the panel. <laughs> but, but I think that we have a lot of interesting like research institutions here, like uh, VTT Textile Institute, Cluster of Bioeconomy. And I know that you're all looking for partners, you want to look uh, for consortia. So maybe you can tell us what could be the most interesting themes and topics for the cooperation from your side. Who could approach you, for example? What idea could be for you the most uh, promising and interesting? I don't know, maybe we start from VTT, from, from UC. Because you, I think yeah, you are the research institute who the most uh, uh, <laughs> successful in Horizon 2020. So what kind of project? Yeah, so, so, yeah good morning. So I'm, I'm just sort of playing around with the, with the camera, as you can see, that in our very fancy, fancy <laughs> studio here. <laughs> Uh, as I said, as, as, a, as a sort of a research organization, we work a lot within the areas of, of circular and, 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 and bio, bio economy. So there are actually a lot of topics that, that are of interest to us. Uh, so we could start from the, the decarbonization was, was one of the topics that was, was raised up in, in the recent, in the previous, by the previous speaker. And of course, uh, we believe that actually if you want to build a, a carbon neutral society and, and uh, so you have to start from the decarbonization of the energy sector. So that's, of course, is something that, uh, that we'd be working on, on both from the technology side, but also from the systemic uh, side, looking at the, the, the whole energy system and how you do that. Uh, there are a lot of topics in, in, in circular economy. Uh, we have some experts on the, on the panel who can, who can talk more on these specific opportunities, but uh, on, on uh, things like, like um, electronics, minerals, plastics, um, textiles, 
Uh, so, so sort of uh, resources that are, that are still pretty much uh, sort of consumed in a very linear fashion, and we know that we need to, we need to start working. They're already sort of uh, promising technical solutions uh, for, for actually starting to introduce circular economy principles, both in the design and also in the reuse and, and recycling part of it. So, so, so I would say that there are, there are a wide variety of, of topics where we could, would be very interesting to start working on. So maybe Polish side. Professor Ciechańska, who is representing Association Bioeconomy Cluster, constantly like uh, preparing new project and, and, and looking uh, for new possibilities. So Professor Ciechańska, tell us what is your main interest in, in uh, bioeconomy and in Horizon? Uh, again, I uh, thank you very much for giving give, an uh, opportunity to be here and to meet uh, together with you. Uh, of course, it will be better face to face, but it, now it's a good uh, solution to have a, a contact by um, uh, uh, communications uh, commu uh, by uh, internet. Uh, Green Deal is a very important um, instrument for us, for our association bioeconomic cluster, because we are creating a common uh, platform for dialogue and uh, cooperation between the scientific communities and entrepreneurship um, and peace. And therefore, we would like to, uh, to implement the new uh, look for the understanding bioeconomy, bioeconomy, circular bioeconomy. And the Green Deal is uh, like a recommendation and inspiration, motivation and uh, recommendations for the uh, industry partners to be more open for the uh, green technologies, for the uh, implementation of the innovations in the uh, new uh, green ecosystem. The therefore, uh, for us, is a uh, good uh, chance to uh, to build a cross-sectoral and cross-regional cooperation in using the covering the basic pillars like cooperation, innovation, education, entrepreneurship, development, and social communication. Our mission and our ambitions is to build the BioCircle Hub, which will be devoted to the Bio Business Accelerator and the four um, uh, topics are very important for us to be implemented. For one is the building the bio-based value chains for development of initiatives supporting for the effective bio-waste management. And we are working very hardly in this, uh, uh, and we have uh, connected with the different uh, regions in Poland, and we uh, put uh, in the last time the a new project for the Life Plus uh, for the uh, other regions uh, for the bio waste management and in the e implementation of the plans for the uh, uh, bio waste management uh, using the bio communities. Uh, therefore, this is a very important uh, topic for us. Uh, uh, another is uh, also the ambition for us to create a center of pilot activities for implementation of bio-waste cascade refineries. And we are thinking about the one place in the central uh, region, like uh, uh, Lotskie. And we would like to organize the, the center for the uh, finding a way how to uh, implement the new technologies, eco, um, technologies. Uh, which will be very uh, interesting for the industry, but also uh, it will be more cost for them uh, to start with uh, on the uh, not so high technological readiness. And we are, would like to be a center for the uh, making some uh, new uh, ways uh, solutions for the implementation of the eco technologies. Uh, of course, in the uh, bio raffinery, cascade bio raffinery. And the second, uh, third one is the development of techno-economical competitive European circular bioeconomy. This is a very important uh, topic for us and to uh, build the consortia which will be, uh, would like to uh, create with us uh, the, uh, something like a hub, accelerator or um, other clusters 
uh, which will be related to the uh, circular bioeconomy. And the uh, last one is the bioeducation for different stakeholders for driving of growing sustainable bioeconomy. This is very important for us to, to uh, we are open for uh, discussion in this area and we started to build the consortia which will be uh, interested in implementation of those uh, topics. Thank you. Thank you very much. So maybe now we can go back to Finland and we have representative of Natural Resource Institute Finland, Dr. John uh, Kettle, director of this institute. So uh, Mr. Kettle, could you share with you your perspective, your interest, your willingness for cooperation? Sure. Uh, I assume you can hear me okay. Yes, we can hear you perfectly. Thank you. Great. Yeah, thank you for the invitation to participate in uh, this event. I mean, as you pointed out, our, the title of our institute is Natural Resources Institute Finland, and this really does fit exactly to the Green Deal. We are very much front and center of uh, everything related to the Farm Support Initiative. I mean, we see many opportunities related to preserving and restoring ecosystems as well as from the agricultural side, but not forgetting the forest sector as well. So we are very interested in the cluster six uh, topics, food, bioeconomy, natural resources, agriculture and environment. And I would say that we all know uh, sort of within Europe, the nature is in a state of crisis due to changes in land and sea use and over exploitation, climate change, pollution, invasive alien species. But uh, now is a chance through this Green Deal to actually start tackling this. We've got uh, quite a lot of ongoing proposal writing happening as we speak and of course we're looking for uh, partners uh, from around Europe but also of course within Poland uh, based on uh, having this event today it would be really important for us. Um, we have definitely between Poland and Finland shared interests on forest uh, related topics. Um, one of my colleagues pointed out to me only this week that the growing stock in the forest in Poland and Finland are roughly the same but he did have to then admit that in Poland you actually have slightly larger growing stock than us at 2.7 billion cubic meters. So we are very interested in, in the forest sector, as I say, we're interested in the farm to fork strategy, especially where we can uh, employ new ideas related to uh, risk uh, of uh, use of chemical pesticides, reducing the chemical pesticides, reducing the use of fertilizers and promoting uh, a really healthy um, food generation, but at the same time we are very active in Europe and in Finland on reducing food loss in, and food waste. And of course, as you can imagine, uh, one, one of the other topics that we're active in that we haven't actually talked about this morning at all is the, the, the aquaculture uh, aspect, the, the fish population in rivers, and these of course come under the biodiversity topic, but also under the food topic. So anyone who is interested in talking with us, we are more than interested to talk to you related to these topics. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you very much. So as we see, we have a lot of different projects going around, a very interesting one. But how really make it happen? How really make all these partners together? And maybe uh, there is representative of Business Finland. Yes, you want to say something, please, Anna? Yes, 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 please. Anishka, I, I think that maybe we have to turn to, to the business point of view that how actually this Green Deal could, could help the businesses, the companies and, and how could they benefit the Green Deal and also that what kind of actions uh, should be taken to support the companies, first of all to be familiar with the Green Deal and the opportunity it, it, it offers and um, on the other hand how to, how to exploit also the R&D community to help them. So I would actually like to, to turn to uh, Dr. Kyo Munter from Business Finland, uh, fin Finland uh, what is your insight uh, from the Green Deal and, and also how the companies could benefit out of it and what can we do to support them? So Reja, please. Uh, anyhow, uh, thank you for the excellent question because uh, that's something what, what's very familiar for Business Finland to do. We are aiming to, to 
bring the, the results of, of research into practice and that's maybe the main thing which was already mentioned in many speeches today that, that this is important and if we look to the background of, of Green Deal and, and also the forthcoming Horizon Europe we can see that quite many uh, uh, reports have been made and, and which, which uh, also state the urgency of, of putting things into practice. And uh, this is this is uh, actually uh, the background for that. That uh, if we really want to have uh, uh, a climate neutral Europe by 2050, uh, we have actually only one or maybe two investment rounds within the industry. And. Uh, that's that's really a fast uh, pace which we have have here, and uh, therefore we have to change the, the uh, uh, way of doing. And we have seen already the existing green deal uh, uh, call that uh, the higher TLR levels are applied. Uh, this will happen also in Horizon Europe. Of course, there will be. Uh, funding available for groundbreaking research that's for sure but for the, mo uh, the most important thing what I think is that that uh, research has to uh, support the investments so that they will become become uh, uh, financially success successful so uh, so more applied science will be needed and during the next five years we have to decide actually where and how to invest in order to reach the goal and uh, then for the uh, if we look to the company side that how they can benefit from from the green deal i think the the uh, the green deal has became because of the companies the companies have wanted the green deal to happen and uh, they are not looking only or the main benefit from the European cooperation is not actually the funding it's it's uh, it's the cooperation and the cooperation becoming uh, European wide it makes uh, the European inner market stronger so we can really compete in the global market and this goes as well to the uh, local and, and, and uh, national business uh, ideas we have to be able to scale our technologies up and so therefore I'm so happy to participate in this, this panel today and I hope that we can reach uh, cooperation results, results uh, later. This dog is not mine, uh, we have 10 dogs but they are not, not uh, in-house at the moment. Thank you. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Thanks Veja. The dog so, is mine. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. It's nice to have the, these uh, normal sounds of the normal life also as a background. Um, I would also like to ask the same question from uh, Juha Eskelin and, 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 uh, and Marcin Podkorski. How do you see that these uh, regional um, uh, uh, decision makers and, and policy makers can help the companies to take the benefits out of the, out of the uh, green deal and also how, how 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 the regions can support the companies so would it be so that Mar Mar if you start or you have it's marcin you start and you have then you continue <laughs> okay so please floor is yours mr podkowski yes you <laughs> the important question and difficult question i I think I am trusting more to the uh, regional bureaucrats than the decision makers, so uh, they are not uh, that much interested of, 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 of actually of, uh, of innovation policies. Unfortunately, they, they are, the decision making is based mainly on, on daily basis, but uh, of course we, we, we technocrats are, are preparing good programs for them. So you have to you have to include your to, to your into your 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 uh, regional programs uh, items themes uh, which are fi fixing and which are which are in, uh, in relation with the green deal and uh, all the 
things are which are under it and uh, naturally the, the the resources and financing uh, financing aspects are, are in the key position um, even thought we we don't have uh, so much uh, cohesion funding in in our region I think our results have been rather good ones uh, thanks to Luke and thanks to BTT they are doing very good work and they have got uh, some pennies from the regional authorities as well in the great uh, research projects uh, even thought we are the minor funders of that uh, what is at the moment uh, politically important is that uh, that uh, that we are influencing to the national uh, uh, recovery plans uh, and and uh, this is what we are actually now doing so we have drafted a couple of proposals also coming from VTT but also from the cities and municipalities and development companies uh, which uh, where we try to lobby funding uh, from our national plan which will be finally decided by European Union uh, uh, which are connected to the uh, Green Deal they are proposals from starting from uh, energy production up to many other aspects of Green Deal and uh, this is the thing which is under, uh, on the table at the moment what I'm wor worried is because Finland got rather small money out of that recovery plan, uh, roughly three billion uh, euros, uh, is that we are not uh, uh, fer fertilizing uh, knowledge and maybe also resources over the Europe of uh, inside this re recovery er 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 recovery plan, so that we can use all the knowledge which are at present in our continent to help either Poland or Finland or any other European country uh, wherever the knowledge is coming uh, uh, there's a there's a I'm afraid that, that the national in, national interests are, are, are too high in this in this respect and there we need uh, cooperation with, with between the states and and of course between the, the regions as well thank you so maybe I ask Magda, who is with me uh, in the studio from National Contact Fund, how you support the companies, research institute, how they can uh, find help in your organization. And there is like similar organization in Finland as well? How, how it works? Could you tell us a little bit? Um, yes, actually Business Finland is uh, like our twin in this matter. They support applicants in Horizon 2020. Uh, also uh, Finland Academy of Science, they also perform a function of national contact point. And uh, since the very start of the whole idea of the European Green Deal and accompanying idea of European Green Deal call, uh, we started the information campaign which was directed not only to uh, research institutions but also to the business uh, companies and industries, small and medium ones. Um, and we tried to bring as much knowledge, as interest as possible. Uh, we started uh, with a um, big national conference, uh, uh, research and innovations um, uh, in the industry. And then we followed um, by the campaign uh, called uh, Autumn with European Green Deal Call. And it lasted uh, a week. Um, and during this week we um, prepared um, short um, films um, presenting uh, in details different topics of European Green Deal call and also we organized uh, chats with experts and um, we gained a huge interest uh, of participants uh, that was almost um, thousands of viewings of those films and now we can see that there is an enormous interest. I cannot recall any other uh, Horizon 2020 call with such a 
strong interest, especially from the companies. So um, uh, right now I have uh, I'm in touch with the companies and I have a portfolio of companies that are deeply interested in joining the, the consortia, in joining the implementation of um, systemic innovation aiming and at climate neutrality. And this is in various, various topics. Um, starting from uh, climate neutrality uh, through the energy and transport, uh, also companies interested in implementing farm to fork strategy and of course companies who would love to become part of uh, circular economy territorial clusters. So uh, the interest uh, in Poland uh, is really huge, very high and we support our um, beneficiaries um, from shaping the concept, helping them uh, to contact the, the consortia, uh, then we help them uh, with uh, uh, drafting a project proposal and also we support them uh, during the implementation of, of the project. We help to deal with all financial and uh, intellectual property rights too. So we assist them along the whole process of uh, preparing and implementation of the projects. Thank you very much. So last shot. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, I know I have like, I try to be 45 seconds uh, intervention. Uh, so first, the region, thank you very much. Where somebody, somebody said about the applied science. This is exactly what we are looking for. This is exactly where the business needs support from the uh, regional government. And that's why we are doing this, because uh, we try to be on the two pillars. The first pillar is how to find the business models and the marketing of the new circular economy and the Green Deal. There, 95% of all companies are requiring from us exactly this promotion. They say, give us the chance, give us the support, how to be better on the market, how to better deliver our products. We can build these products. We can make the, the, the products ready for the consumers, but give us the chance and support us with this uh, cooperation outside, but also inside the region. And the second pillar, the second pillar is building the platform, building the platform for better delivery of the applied science with the other partners uh, outside and inside again from uh, from our region so these two pillars and then we how how we connect it we build a green hub and then we give uh, in, insights uh, to the partners to the stakeholders uh, in our region what is important what is uh, so water is important uh, financing of the packaging is important uh, 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 industry 4.0 is important internet of things and so on and so on and the, we give by the bilateral and mm, small working groups meeting the delivery of the information but the companies needs for us also the marketing in the business model. This is what I didn't say at the beginning, but if you are looking for some low cost partnerships, uh, let to say how to deliver better business model marketing, I'm welcome. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Very good insights. So I think that, um, Anishka, I think that it's uh, almost time to, to, to close the session, but maybe we can have a very short round. Final statement, two seconds from each of our distinguished panelists. So you see, will you start? Final statement. Um, my, fi my final statement actually uh, amplifying, amplifying actually what was just said by, by the Marshall Office and then also by, by uh, Reijo Munter is that now it's time to start making the science to, to work and, and get it to, to the business and as said, the time is of essence at the moment, so we need to start amplifying and, and sort of uh, accelerating things to, to move forward. Yeah, very good. Uh, John? Yeah, sure. I, I can't help but agree with Yussi's point there. I would just say that, you know, if we are really going to build back better, as I've heard said many, many times in other events uh, in the last few weeks, we all need to be resilient. We all need to think beyond uh, uh, sort of country boundaries 
And I think mm -hmm. we are on a very good route to do this. Time is short, but I think we can do this. And we owe it to the children and the grandchildren that we do this now. Thanks, John. And then... Professor Cichańska, yeah. maybe? Uh, okay. Uh, applied sciences every time is uh, very important. And therefore, it's needed to have an uh, organization and the clusters which will be uh, uh, related to the implementation of the applied science uh, for uh, industry. That uh, for our um, uh, association is open for the collaboration in this area. And we started to, to build uh, with Innovo uh, something like uh, making a model, a business model for biocircularity value chains for uh, bio packages marketplace. That therefore, as Martin uh, uh, mentioned before, that the packaging uh, sector is very uh, important also. And, uh, of course, the waste management, as I uh, mentioned uh, earlier, and also the uh, bioeconomy. Uh, cascade uh, bio circular bioeconomy is very important. Uh, we are open for the uh, collaboration and preparation of the new um, new uh, models models for the uh, uh, networking integration and uh, matchmaking between the science and uh, uh, industry in this area. Thank you very much. Thank you. I think, Ray, uh, two seconds, final statement. Okay, thank you. Uh, cooperation is everything. Let's make Poland and Finland and the whole Europe great again. Thank you. <laughs> great. Oh, no, thanks. So, <laughs> so uh, Mr. Podgorski. <laughs> um, uh, the Commission, uh, last time, um, let's uh, go from uh, talking to doing. Yes. Very good, uh, and and then you are. Yeah, as a regional uh, authority, we are we are authorities. We are ready to to support you in your joint project and uh, cooperation. So I, I encourage you to be brave, be principal, and be practical. Yes, and persistent. I would add persistent as well, Magda. Uh, well, today we meet to mix and match and uh, find the partners for the last call in Horizon 2020, but I would like all of you to stay in touch and work together also and look further for the Horizon Europe, because this call is just the opening of what's going to happen within the Horizon Europe. And also I would love to uh, other Pol Polish regions to follow the region of, of Łódź, which is absolutely the most active, most circular and most advanced. So I would love to see the others follow this great, great example. So congratulations to, to Wood. Great job. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think it's time to close the session. And I, I, I would like to give a big hand, even this is a virtual hand, to all our distinguished panelists. This was excellent discussion. Yeah. And thank you for your good insights. And let's be in touch and let's make Europe great again. That was a good thing. Okay, so Goodbye. now we have to turn to bye-bye. Uh, we have to turn to session two and and for the presentations. So um, I think that our first presentation will be given by Professor Ali Harlin from ETT. Ali is uh, let's say he he's a, he's a multi-talent person and and he has a lot lots of uh, good insights on textiles on cellulose. And, and everything which is related to ke chemistry. And he will give us a, a speech on circular textile fibers. In addition to professorship at VTT, he's also co-founder of, of Infinite Fiber Company. So uh, we are really looking forward to your, your presentation. Please, floor is yours. Thank you. I'm excited to see whether, whether we get the slides. I understood that they are coming from, from Vasa. On, on the stream, but let, uh, there we are. Excellent. So uh, was very interesting to, to listen to, to the uh, panel discussion, and now it was uh, <clears throat> the question of practical outcomes. And this is a one opportunity of a practical outcome. 
so how to take the, the applied science in, in uh, real. So <clears throat> the textile value chain is complicated and it's global. And, and it was asked that, that how we could make it more European or how we could like re, uh, industrialize or revitalize our economy. And one of the questions is that which way we can say like uh, take more of this value chain back to us and the, the answer is, is recycling. So that because the new cotton fields of the future are really in our cities where we use our clothes and the recycling is also the way for to, 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 to achieve the, the Green Deal at, uh, targets. So if we look at the, say, all our um, split of um, textile, we are speaking about typically two, two main materials and then a lot of other materials. So we have been dealing very much in, in a cotton recycling or anything that is a cellulosic base materials. That's because of our, our heritage and the polyester issues are gradually coming up, which I'm, I'm going to explain, but anyhow, in Europe, uh, typically uh, cotton is more pronounced than, than in, in the net figures in, in the world. And the recycling of textile uh, has been started to, to, to be solved, like in your other neighbor, uh, Germany, has uh, a factory of uh, which is biggest in Europe in textile recycling and, and that applies a mechanical recycling technology and if we look at the, the say cut of the materials which they, they are collecting it's a pretty much of a nearly wearable clothes which are typically dumped in, in the third nations these days and the portion of the recycled really recycled textile fiber is, is still reasonably small, but the volumes of, of the material are quite big. So only 3.6% of the, the textiles are recycled. And that is uh, a topic in, in, in the EU. Uh, legislation to, to, to be changed and, and we are expecting to, to say 55% recycling requirement there. So uh, this is kind of a roadmap and, and what we have seen so that originally most of the say textile waste has been dumped and, and because it came a legislation that organic waste cannot be like dumped anymore, the combustion has become the, the most important way to, to get rid of the textile waste. But like that's wasting and, and we are gradually now building up a respinning, what is the mechanical recycling. And there is also a startups for, for chemical recycling, which is coming. So we basically have a two, two avenues to go. And it means that the, the combustion part will, will uh, reduce and also the reuse of the textile will increase in future. So we have been creating a uh, textile recycling ecosystem in Finland and, and we have a hundred million ton global uh, recycling which is only one twentieth of that of Europe. But like we have already been able to demonstrate that, that the, the ecosystem can be built and, and I would say that this is a great opportunity for us to, 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 to cascade further in Europe and, and look at also the, the greater, greater uh, consortia and, and uh, Poland is absolutely a, a one one nation who, who has a focal position in Europe and also the capabilities to, to, to be involved in that. So, and then, uh, thank you, Anna, you, you realized already that, that 
we have some say startups this is a one there is a, a rester uh, company would have started to, to establish a factory in in Paimio in in southwestern Finland uh, to mechanically recycle the textile and, and this facility will uh, take through about 10 percent of our our national textile waste and and that business model is creating there and typically that say mechanical recycling is the core stone or on 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 the top when you, when you have collected then you have to start to refine the textile and mechanical uh, level is the definitely needed and what is then built next on is uh, where we have a one VTT spin-off as well, which name is Infinited Fiber Company, is that uh, those fibers which cannot be like reused, or those textiles which cannot be reused, or which cannot mechanically. So Infinited Fiber Company is one example of the VTT startups, and that is for chemical recycling so it's creating the next layer on the top of the mechanical recycling and they are dedicated for uh, cotton dissolving and turning it back to a cottonish fiber again and uh, that enables a the, the recycling of the most worn out textiles to and upgrade them back to the, the fashion again and like when we combine these layers of the uh, occupational uh, uh, collection of the material, the mechanical recycling and the chemical recycling on the top of it, we can create a full ecosystem and bring the industry partially back to the Europe. And I see that uh, Poland is on a focal position on, on this development because of your position and your, say, uh, industrial heritage and, 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 and technical heritage. And in Finland, we have the, say, already proven concepts on, on the textile recycling ecosystems. And if we combine them, I, I believe we have a winning concepts available for the Green, green Deal uh, requirements. Thank you for your time and interest. Thank you for, for this excellent presentation. Okay, so uh, Anushka, will you... The uh... presentation will be from Industrial Biotechnology Laboratory and Dr. Uh, Engineer Krzysztof Makowski from Bianano Park, Łódź uh, will uh, give, a, give a presentation. Uh, he will tell about how to uh, reach from the concept research to the real innovation. And Bionano Park actually it's an um, um, institute, it's organization, could also serve as a platform uh, to support different uh, institutions, different companies as well to collaborate for uh, innovation, for a uh, new bioeconomy solution. And uh, do we have Krzysztof Makowski with us? So let's start from the beginning. Good morning, my name is Krzysztof Makowski. I'm a head of Industrial Biotechnology Laboratory in uh, Bio Nano Park. Thank you very much for the short introduction. And uh, just a few words about Bio Nano Park. Uh, Bio Nano Park is an uh, LLC company. Hello. Um, it's Maybe located in Łódź. It's located in Łódź, uh, in the center of Poland. And Bio Nano Park uh, occupies 14 hectare area which is divided into plots for investors uh, uh, the main goal of bio nano park is to support business and science in developing new ideas and technologies and to help implement them into economy uh, the essential part of bio nano park is building that you can see on the pictures the building was established in 2012 and it's divided in two parts. 
The Left Guard is conference center and incubator for startup and spin-off companies. And the second part on the right is occupied by two laboratories. Uh, industrial Biotechnology Laboratory and Molecular and Nanostructural Biophysics Laboratory. Each of them is divided into, into five subunits. And uh, additionally, in 2016, it was established a new object with uh, laboratories dedicated to chemistry in silica calculations and, and medicine. Uh, but today I would like to focus on industrial biotechnology laboratory and its possibilities. And the picture you can see a part of our technological hall with some equipment. And uh, how do we collaborate with our partners or customers? Uh, so we, we make single or long-term services for companies or academia but we also participate uh, as a partner in scientific projects subsidiary by uh, European Commission or Polish agencies, uh, for instance, National Center of Research and Development. Uh, we can be a partner or a contractor in any part of development of the uh, introducing technology or, or biotechnology. Uh, we conduct our research mainly focused on microbial screening uh, for desired features, for instance, enzymatic activities uh, or production by microbial strains, small active molecules or different types of exopolysaccharides. Uh, we, we conduct research on biotransformations and hydrolysis by both extracted enzymes or by whole cell systems. Uh, a part of Industrial Biotechnology Laboratory is analytical unit equipped with LCMS, GCMS, or capillary, capillary electrophoresis systems, so we can analyze effects of our experiments constantly. Uh, okay, so uh, as I mentioned, we started in 2012 and periodically or constantly collaborate with over 50 companies or academia from Poland and other European countries, including uh, France, Germany, Netherlands, Iceland or Sweden. Uh, we didn't collaborate with any Finnish company so far, but I deeply believe it will change soon. And uh, what are our other assets? Uh, we conduct analytical services in accordance to GLP. We have introduced quality system ISO 9001, and our staff is well educated, well educated and experienced. And uh, in that slide, you can picture, you can see a, a sample of projects where industrial uh, biotechnology laboratory participated as a as a partner or, or contractor. All of them are related to bioeconomy or circular economy. And uh, at the end, <clears throat> a few examples of companies we constantly collaborate on development of new technologies and products. Uh, on the right, you can see a logotype of bioproduct that reduces emission of toxic gases, uh, mainly ammonium and sulfuric compounds uh, in poultry production. That's the effect of uh, our collaboration with JHJ company and Lodz University of Technology. Uh, Another example, Intermac company, they are focused on production of modern preparations for agriculture, fertilizers, and biostimulants. And uh, last but not least, our strategic partner, with whom we collaborate for over eight years, Biotechnica. Uh, on the picture, you can see the construction site of uh, biorefinery in Grand Forks in North Dakota, where technology we partially working on has been implemented. But I think much more about it uh, tell you uh, Thomas Capella, owner of Biotechnica. And uh, thank you very much for your kind attention and greetings from Uchi. 
Uh, thank you very much, uh, Krzysztof. Now we have to um, go to Pani Dr. Edyta Sulak, and she's Chief Specialist for Science and Research and Enviotex. So please, Dr. Sulak, could you tell us a little bit, a bit more about your company, about the research which you conducting? Welcome. Thank you to the organizers uh, for the, the given opportunity to actively join the, this workshop. Uh, why Envirotex? I will present sustainable level approach developed within this project and also kept this title as a crowning for sustainable textiles. As we are more and more aware, current economies, uh, including textile and clothing industry, uh, comprising uh, uh, complex interlinked value chains, are still predominantly based on a linear model. Shortly and simply, take it away. According to the Products You Are Ship Institute, textile manufacturing is the largest polluting industry in the world after oil and gas. Result in one, two, three, just now three, Full truck load of textile is landfilled or incinerated. About one third of reef stores is not sold. Fashion is responsible for over 20% of industrial water pollution in famous second place, second larger polluter, with the use of water to the quantity of 37 million of Olympic swimming pools with carbon, foot, foot, uh, carbon footprint of international freight and shipping, with uh, microfibers release equivalent to the weight of 3 million barrels of oils. Hence, one of the key challenges in the textile and uh, clothing industry is more efficient management of materials and others transformation towards circular economy. That's why in our uh, institute uh, with Kasiewicz Research Network, which we focus also on recycling of textiles and circular economy issues in four research departments, mechanical and chemical textile technologies, non-events designing and production. Also, we work in areas uh, of textile materials, improving safety and quality of people's life, functionalization of textile and composite materials, innovative 3D structures for technical applications, with collaboration in, uh, uh, with four, uh, five accredited testing laboratories, and assessment of different kinds of properties of raw materials, textile products, and technological processes in collaboration with the department where our solutions are implemented and also within our certification unique text as the only one, uh, for example, as the only one in Poland ensuring and enabling uh, certification for 100 eco text and text for sustainable production. And uh, within Envirotex, we uh, focus on designing and production space because when you think about circular economy, you think about what to produce, how to produce. We would like to develop barrier textile materials, ensuring efficient protection against electromagnetic fields because there will be a need. And we use ecological magnetron sputter, sputtering technique. We use uh, specially designed and manufactured device unique in Europe. We can uh, produce materials with the width of 60 centimeters. These materials as wallpaper were used and implemented in a medical facility, in hospital operating room with device generating electromagnetic field of high frequency because outside this room, the intensity of radiation was too high to, to have allowance of uh, relevant authorities to use this operating room. And after installation, uh, this operating uh, 
room now is used. Uh, there is no problem uh, with uh, electromagnetic radiation outside this room. Within Enter project, we develop pilot case to find a way of effective post-production textile waste management as there was an urgent need to find, for example, recycling possibilities. The cost of waste storage and disposal uh, are very substantial for the companies. We invited two textile companies, producers of carpets, grass and quilted textile materials. Different companies, uh, production textile waste were collected and were assessed in terms of the structure and raw materials composition, the potential possibility of protesting or other use Polyolefins and natural fibers were assessed and analyzed in cooperation with external experts. And uh, the possibility of obtaining needle non-movements from collected post-production textile waste was tested in cooperation with recycling company. Uh, the possibility of obtaining ropes from selected post-production uh, textile waste produced according to chemical technology was tested in cooperation uh, with University of Bielsko Biała. And the potential application areas uh, co uh, covers geotextile construction industry. The technology uh, was uh, tested, uh, such ROPs were success successfully tested in real conditions as anti erosion protection. It absorbs water, store it, providing good condition for the subsequent growth for, of plants. And the most valuable result was uh, new local value chains creation. The textile companies with similar waste streams in terms of the processing possibility were involved and they uh, start cooperation with recycling companies and with experts in, in the recycling. And finally, uh, an example of waste management in our experimental production department, the technology of using textile waste, non-woven waste with super absorbent, up to now incinerated, to obtain a valuable textile uh, product, ropes, was developed and implemented in our institute. Thank you for your attention. So, thank you so much. This was very and I think that you, you have a good match with Ali Hardlin, so maybe you can be in, in contact um, in order to, to create some, some new uh, applications and, and ideas for Horizon Europe, for example. But I would like to invite our next speaker now, and uh, this is a very interesting topic on, on how the regional innovation ecosystem can actually boost the circular economy and circularity at large and 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 uh, the presentation will be given by Ms. Pia Tunis from Helsinki Uusima Regional Council and she's going to tell about the Helsinki Uusima Circular Economy Valley. Pia, please, floor is yours. Thank you, Anne. Uh, it's nice to be here. Good morning to everybody and greetings for, from Helsinki. Uh, I will tell you about our plans to develop the regional innovation ecosystem, the Helsinki Uusima Circular Economy Valley. Uh, we have uh, this, the basis of our climate work is the Helsinki Uusima Regional Program. It has three strategic priorities for regional development and it includes the goal uh, of being carbon neutral by the year 2035 and also actions in the circular economy. Yeah, uh, we also have uh, some upper level targets to lead the way. Uh, we, as we know, we have the, uh, yes, you can see now, the EU's new circular economy action plan for a cleaner and more competitive Europe. And then we have uh, our government program of Finland uh, there are two key objectives, uh, carbon neutral Finland by 2035 and uh, also Finland is a forerunner in circular economy. So these are quite ambitious goals for us. Uh, we are preparing uh, right now the Helsinki Uusimaa carbon neutral roadmap 
uh, and I'm responsible for it. So I come from uh, the climate uh, side, not exactly from circular economy side, but, but we have now six focus areas in our roadmap and uh, they will structure our climate work. Uh, these focus areas are targeted at uh, climate smart use and construction, smart and emission free mobility, fast and fair energy transition, sustainable consumption and production, and also for ca uh, carbon sinks and compensation. Uh, one key focus area is circular economy, uh, and it, is, uh, it has been seen to support the green transition and support the climate work. We also have our new smart specialization strategy, RIS-3, uh, for helsinki Uusima region. Uh, it will bring together all regional strengths and research and innovation in research and innovation and is highlighting circular economy as a part of climate neutrality. Uh, as umbrella theme, uh, we have resource wisdom and it has three strategic priorities, climate neutrality, citizen city and industrial modernization. So as you can see, this uh, climate issue is related uh, very closely, closely to circular economy also in this strategy. Uh, and our important uh, success factors are competence and cooperation. Uh, this risk strategy will steer funding and allocate actions as uh, well as support research development and innovation and create base for more sustainable business uh, and entrepreneurship. Uh, we have very good opportunities for developing circular economy here, here in helsinki Uusima region. We have the largest population here, nearly 1.7 million people. We have the most compact urban structure and effective collection, waste collection system. Uh, we have largest material flows and uh, important possibilities for circular economy are especially side streams of construction, textile and plastic cycles. Uh, we also we also have, uh, sorry, uh, competence and strong uh, research development and, and innovation sector, and also uh, lots of companies and very good possibilities for piloting. We also have challenges for developing circular economy. Uh, this is not easy, as, as you, many of you have noticed. Uh, first, uh, yes. overall regional picture is lacking. Of, of materials flow, flows is lacking. And then uh, we also have diversity of material flows. We have legislative ob obstacles. Uh, business models are still maintaining linear functions and uh, deficiency in circular economy value stains are, chains are still here. So we need a system level transition. And uh, our solution is uh, to develop uh, this kind of circular economy valley, a new concept for a development model to create a circular economy ecosystem. Uh, and we have started to recognize both circular economy ecosystems and key stakeholders, and we are doing this process with BTT and other key actors. And this is the first map you can see here uh, in this presentation. Uh, this is the first uh, presentation and you are the first audience to see it. Uh, so there is the, uh, the ecosystems we have uh, identified uh, in the first phase. And uh, you can see in the map, uh, there are kind of uh, plastic industry hubs, uh, eco-industrial parks, circular districts, yes. and uh, these kind of ecosystems, which are situated here in Helsinki-Uusimaa region. 
uh, there are some advantages of overall development. This is strengthening the whole region. The corporate ecosystems of municipalities and circular economy are brought together. Uh, material cycles can be optimized for a good overall regional purpose, aiming seriously at the global competition as a united area, the valley. Uh, the circular economy valley creates a systematic picture of material cycles and puts the focus on essential action reading regarding the climate effect. At the same time, the regional municipalities can specialize uh, and take responsibility of certain themes, but also share the possibilities with the whole area. And this uh, valley opens up new business possibilities and offers a platform for international marketing, which companies can attach to. Uh, Circular Economy Valley uh, will be started with preliminary report and uh, in this the most important value chains and actors for climate neutrality are acknowledged. A coordinator of re recognized an, an operas operational model for co-development is created and taken in use. Also new models and pilots for cooperation between company and actor clusters, including also inhabitants and cities are made. The planning of efficient actions and gathering clusters of actors behind them. The aim is to foresee future competence needs in cooperation with the regional educational institutions. So we need also the education because uh, we are still lacking, lacking the uh, good quality professionals. And uh, finally, I will give you a few examples of uh, development work on bioeconomy, what we have here in this region. For example, we have this project Herapahvi, uh, the use of cereal shells, parts in packaging materials, and then we have this grow kit, the use of coffee grounds for mushroom cultivation. And we also have uh, this agroecological symbiosis uh, where biogas production uh, is uh, made from uh, farm side streams. It is, it is in Knehtila farm in Hyvinkää where Juha gave his speech. And then uh, we also have this kind of uh, small brewery, beer making of bread waste. Okay, this was the uh, overall picture of our development project, which, which is in very beginning. And we really wish that it will be a success story in future. And also some examples from this region. Thank you. Thank you very thank you, much. Bia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Bia. Now I turn to do Anishka. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's quite difficult because we are pretty far away <laughs> from each other, yes, exactly. so we do our best. <laughs> So now, but yeah, it's super interesting. I think it already sounds like a success story. So we keep our fingers crossed that you fulfill all your plans and, and uh, projects because it sounds great. And now uh, I would like to welcome Mr. Tomasz Capella. Uh, he's owner of uh, Biotechnica company. So now we will hear the business perspective, what they have to face on their everyday operation. And Tomasz Capella will tell us about biotech solution for modern industry. So welcome and floor is your Tomasz. Please share your presentation. Thank you very much. I'm guessing, oh, okay, here it is. Okay, so just a few basic words about the, uh, about the implementation of the, of the new processes and the processes from the field of industrial biotechnology. So my company, Biotechnica, we're very much active in the field of implementing new processes, new bioprocesses. Uh, we're, so what we started with, we basically started with the basic idea or the basic process idea that we would like to commercialize and implement. We do the necessary R&D around that. And in this field, we work a lot with uh, Christoph, who was my, one of the pre-speakers from, uh, from BioNanoPark. 
uh, once we have a reasonably grown idea in the process, we try to implement that. So we're in general an engineering company active in the fields of ethanol and biofuels, both first generation advanced ethanol, second generation ethanol, wastewater treatment, which is wastewater treatment and waste treatment, which is related to it, biogas or methane fermentation in different forms. And we do also develop and implement processes within the period of fine chemicals. And how I said about these industrial sectors that we are covering with the activities of Biotechnica. So we hire people that are, we hire mostly engineers and we hire mostly scientists and research uh, and research people that are active in industrial biotech or biotech sector in, in general. So I'll try to move slides now. Yeah, I'm trying to go through those different stages of a process development if you have that. So stage number one, hopefully that, I hope that everybody can see that. It's been a process development. I already said a few words about that. That's basically a lab work and piloting work that we are doing pretty often together with, uh, with Krzysztof. Then we move to planning and engineering. So we hire an engineers in most of the engineering disciplines. We have process engineers, we have structural architecture, electrical, CNI engineers, whatever you need to be able to implement the full industrial, uh, industrial project. Once you have your preliminary engineering done, you gotta go through permitting, which is very much country specific or location specific. So we do the permitting as well. We lead the, the project through the project execution, which is basically building and erecting an industrial plant do the commissioning, obviously, uh, to have the, the plant up and, up and running. Uh, and I basically, at the end of the day, I have two slides from the last plant, or so the last two installations that we've been involved in. One of them already mentioned by Krzysztof, which is a Red River biorefinery located in, in the U.S., in the United States, in the state of North Dakota. That is a plant which is converting industrial wastes coming from sugar production and potato processing. We convert that into... Uh, into high quality advanced ethanol. The waste that we have from this process, we convert that into biogas and later on into biomethane uh, for the grid injection and utilize part of that also as the energy source for the basic project. So this plant is operational for a year right now. And one more example of several projects in biorefining area that we did over here in Poland with one of the Polish companies, AWW. That, that's an old industrial site, as you can guess, probably based on the structures over there. It's a, the building itself is a sugar plant back from 19th, early 19th century. So we do have a bunch of biorefining processes implemented over there right now. We take raw biomass, refine that into right now probably more than six different products. All of that is also closed with anaerobic system generating biogas, which comes back to the original process as the, as the energy source and the wastewater treatment plant. We, we develop that right now. Also, we have development plans for another probably two or three years, which is still based on biorefining plant proteins uh, and bioprocesses. Mm. So Biotechnica as such is an execution, is a, is a company coming up with ideas, developing the ideas with local institutions, both academic institutions and commercial institutions, because BioNanopark is a commercial institution. We try to convert those ideas into basic design the way that the industry would recognize that as a basic design, something that you can potentially implement in a larger scale, go through permitting, sometimes also financing, or actually always financing if the financing is not strictly private, then execution, commissioning, and operation, successful operation of the industrial plant. So that's, that's what we're doing. Thank you very much. So thank you so much. This was very interesting. And also it shows that, that uh, RFD has, has really uh, a, a role when, when it comes to the commercial innovations. And I think that there will be a lot of um, cooperation possibilities between Finnish and Polish uh, biotechnology act, because uh, in both countries, actually, biotechnology is, is one of the main driver of the, the bioeconomy. And now we turn actually to, to, the, to the next uh, company presentation. We are going to hear from, of, of a very interesting uh, innovation which is already, already in the markets. It's called Woodley, and uh, Woodley will be presented by Marta Asikainen, who is a chief technology officer in the company called Woodley. So, Marta, please, floor is. Hello, everyone. I hope you can hear me well. Yes, we 
and please let me know if you don't. Um, okay, so thank you, Anne, for the kind introduction, and also uh, thank you for uh, inviting me here and, and to give this talk. So my name is Marta Asikainen, I'm the Chief Technology Officer of Woodley, and a little bit about my background. So um, actually before joining Woodley about three years ago, I, I used to work at VTT. So we have this close connection between VTT and Woodley as well. But let's go, uh, let's go to the presentation. So our company is called Woodley, but also our products carry the same name. So we are a startup. We are a Helsinki-based startup. We are currently employing five people. So we are still in the early phase. We've just brought our first products to the market. And our product is a completely unique new type of wood-based, recyclable and carbon neutral plastic. So what does it mean? So our product is wood-based. It means that the main raw material, the, the backbone of all of our products is wood cellulose. And then we modify the cellulose to make wood lip. Uh, the products are recyclable, which means that all wood dip products, they fit very nicely in the plastics recycling systems. And Woodley is carbon neutral, which means that the carbon footprint of Woodley is actually slightly uh, below zero, making it truly a carbon neutral plastic. And it is really a unique and new type of material. So it is the first wood-based and completely transparent bioplastic that can be manufactured with the conventional plastics production lines. So our aim is to solve many of the challenges um, that are currently faced by the new biomaterials that have been brought to the market. First of all, I believe, I think the audience here, we, we also, we believe together that uh, we need to move from using the fossil resources um, to the bio-based resources. However, when we want to start using more and more of the bio-based resources for different applications, we need to have a versatile raw material source. So we can't keep on using only glucose or, or sugars and we can't use only starch and, or, and those materials, but we need to use all different types of bio-based feedstocks. And we have chosen cellulose as the main raw material of our products. And this is simply because cellulose is, after all, the most common organic polymer on Earth. And there is plenty of it. Um, Woodley is produced by existing machinery, which means that we are not building our own factory. It was actually really interesting, the presentation uh, about from Thomas from Biotechnica, because you are actually building factories. But um, how we work is that we are not building our own factory, but we are um, we are joining forces with the uh, plastics converters and plastics manufacturers, and we are building networks so that Woodley can be processed and produced with the existing machinery. Um, okay, so the end products, we have different types of packaging products. We have flexible packaging. We can make, uh, we can do more rigid packaging, and we can also do actual like consumer products. But right now we are, we, our focus is on the, in, the, in the world of, of packaging. So we've chosen plastics recycling as the end of life for Woodley, and there are many reasons for this. I mean, Woodley fits really well in the plastics recycling, so it can be reprocessed many times, and new products can be made from the recycled materials. And of course, there are many drivers for this. So first of all, the EU regulation um, is really like, like guiding us to go for recycling. Like there is a clear, a message from the EU plastic strategy that all plastic products need to be recycled. And of course, it's also a matter of material efficiency and sustainability that it is wise to use materials many times. Now, I hope you can see the next slide about the supply chain. Um, so here is Woodley is marked with a little green ball in the entire circle of supply chain. And everything starts, of course, from number one, the feedstocks. So it starts from the forest, uh, starts from the chemical companies where we get our raw materials and then we make the, the Woodley granulate with the compounding process. 
There we have industrial partners who make the compounding for us. And then we move on to number four, which is converting. So there we make, we make the films, we make the uh, packaging items, we make the uh, pots and the jars and, and all of those different products. And there we have a very good network of uh, plastics industry players who are working with us. Then there comes the brand owner and we are talking directly to the brand owners, we still work to the brand owners and then with their mandate we also go to the converters and, and start making, um, collaborate with the converters. Then comes the retail chains and the consumers and in the end the waste management and recycling. And there also we have very good experiences about recycling Woodley and we have very good connections to the Finnish uh, plastics recycling companies with whom we are testing and discussing the future of Woodley recycling. However, uh, so last summer in June we brought the first Woodley products out into market together with the Finnish retail chain called Kesko. It was a Pirkka product, so in Finland everybody knows Pirkka, maybe in Poland it's maybe not, not a known brand, but that's like the, that was the beginning of a new era for us that we have now launched the first products in the, in the retail stores and, and then we are looking at um, launching new interesting news in the next few months for the next products and so on. That was all I had to say at this point and I, I, I will be available for for questions later. Thank you. So thank you very much, Marta. This was very, very interesting and, uh, and it also shows that all, all the science and technology attempts what have been done, they really lead to something which can be utilized by the companies and, and companies can, can, can um, create the products out of them. So it's a very nice example of that, that we really can utilize our abundance material cellulose as, 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 a, as a building block uh, for, for, for uh, future plastics. Uh, now I think that we have to have a little discussion with Anieshka because uh, it seems that we have a slight um, connection, connection issues there and the next presentation presentators are, are not ready to be connected. So um, I, I think that this has been extremely interesting and uh, it shows that we have a lot of uh, common topics here in Finland and, and Poland. And when we look for the Horizon Europe and Green Deal possibilities, actually we can do a lot together. Well, what do you think? Yeah, the, definitely. I think it's uh, such meetings uh, and workshops are, are very needed, very much needed. Especially that in Poland we a little bit work in silos and maybe, uh, of course, we have cooperation with different stakeholders, but here, but not much opportunity to go out uh, to Europe. And actually, this is a, a great momentum for do so and to establish such cooperation. We, as Innovo, also establish Polish Circular Hotspot, which is a platform for support any activities uh, for transition into circular future. And we try to gather the different stakeholders, different partners, to really make a real project, to really make a change, to really make a practical project, not only talking about it, but try to really implement. And we cooperate with different circular hotspots all over Europe, actually with CITRA. CITRA is a Finnish uh, institute organization which prepared the first roadmap for circularity. Uh, and Finland was the first country who actually uh, made such a roadmap. So, uh, chapeau for you. you, you kind of visionary, I would say. Now, now, now we all follow, follow your path, which, which you have started. So, definitely, I think such cooperation is needed and I see a lot of common grants for that. And, and I also think that, that as, as it was said in, uh, from our panel or, or by our panelists, that actually now it's time to go to, to real actions from the talk and I think that we are ready for that. So when we look at the coming, coming years, when we are living in the post-COVID era, I think that all of these sustainable growth issues and circularity and everything we can help the econo economy and economic and, and societal uh, st stability is pretty much needed and um, we have the means to, to carry it out. Yeah. So I, I, I think that this is an excellent, excellent um, example, this uh, whole event that, that, 
there's so much common interest and so much knowledge to be shared and transferred and make these things happen. Yeah, definitely. And you know, what do you think? Yeah, and thanks to VTT actually, because I know that your institute is one of the most active in Horizon 2020, and you make a lot of research. And even I, I heard from Polish panelists, for example, Professor Ciechańska, she said, Oh my God, I work with VTT so many years ago, and you know, I, I would love to like, you know, restart my cooperation mm -hmm. because I have so great uh, like memories and experience with that organization. So, uh, yeah, definitely. And, and good that we have so many business because a business and you know this practical angle as we said it so many times here it's so important and uh, also the, fi the most difficult part I think is scaling up because we have this a lot of technology innovation but how yes. to really scale it up yes how to build a market how to make it uh, approachable for the for the mm -hmm. consumers that's mm -hmm. that's an issue I think at the moment mm -hmm. And that's why we need the very close co cooperation with the companies, because the companies are the ones who then scale it up and also they take these uh, uh, in, in, in events into innovations and into the markets. But um, are we ready for the next presentation? We At are. Least I, <laughs> I hope yeah, that we okay, are, so, so you can introduce Anne. Okay, is it Kirsi Maria there? <laughs> yes, do you hear me? Yes, we can hear. Yes, yeah, so Kirsi Maria, okay. a floor is yours. Well, I had so many major problems, but well, now it seems to be solved. <laughs> it works well. So business from uh, uh, business uh, opportunity from industry of biotechnology. So please. Okay. So. Uh, Hello everybody and I had really a lot of connection problems but hopefully now this will be solved till the end of my talk at least. So very nice to be uh, here with you and I have those presentations what I have heard they have been really been interesting and, and I see already a lot of connections between Finland and, and Poland. Uh, sustainability, sustainability is a key word and as everybody knows so uh, this is a global challenge and we need to find the new solutions uh, to climate change, to food production for ever growing uh, population and so on and these uh, facts are very well known to each of us so we don't need to, to go into the detail on, on those but uh, uh, what comes to the to the biotechnology, uh, we at VTT very much believe that the biotechnology offers an enabling techniques and opportunities to produce various products and goods in the future and now to complement what uh, can be achieved, uh, for instance, by chemistry uh, or even to replace the, some chemical reactions. So we are using the living cells uh, or enzymes uh, to produce these uh, compounds and as you can see in the right hand side so there is a variety of products and examples what can be produced uh, through the biotechnology. Uh, we at VTT, we are developing efficient and sustainable uh, living factories to produce uh, various compounds as you can see on the bottom so they can be uh, biofuels, therapeutic proteins, biomaterials, platform or high value chemicals or even food or cosmetic ingredients. And we have a variety of different organisms what we are utilizing. We have uh, microorganisms, we have algae, we have plant cells and, and uh, especially we have been working a lot with the filamentous fungi. Uh, Synthetic biology automation uh, helps us to engineer and to, to model these cells. Uh, we, have the, we can cover the whole uh, value chain uh, if you can look at this picture. So starting from the organism development, so how we choose the right organism, how we modify it for the metabolic engineering purposes. We can select them uh, with the high throughput screening and automation, what we have been investing a lot of uh, time and also resources lately. And then finally go from the lab scale to the process development, uh, testing, uh, testing the suitability in the bioreactors. 
So these are various steps and, and we can offer to our customers different parts of these. Uh, many customers, they don't want the whole value chain, but they come, for instance, with their own organism or they uh, already know what they want to pro produce and they have a good production chain, but uh, strain, but they, they, for instance, lack the uh, pilot facilities and we can help them in those. Uh, this is a picture of, uh, of our pilot facilities. We have uh, different kind of bioreactors from small scale uh, up to the uh, laboratory scale bio, photobioreactors, uh, disposable bioreactors and so on. And we can go up to the 1200 liter pilot scale. We additionally have also the uh, different food pilots when we can test them uh, and we can taste them, have a sensory evaluation and so on. So these have a specific facilities on, on that. Uh, here now a few examples how, uh, what kind of products we can uh, produce in our systems. Uh, we have a lot of activities in recombinant protein side, so where they can be uh, different type of enzymes, uh, industrial or research enzymes. Uh, therapeutic proteins like antibodies uh, in the pharma field now it is a growing uh, trend is to go to the biological drugs so and antibodies are uh, are um, playing a very crucial role there we can also go to the food products uh, for instance producing milk proteins or egg proteins we have a couple of case studies on on that i will show you later or we can also produce the material components uh, to be used in the new uh, material applications. Uh, we also can produce uh, uh, biofuels or biochemicals, so small molecules, uh, either bulk chemicals or uh, like organic acids, which serve as a bioplastic precursors, or high value chemicals, flavors, biopharmaceuticals, and so on. The uh, food ingredients there we have uh, lately in the now, now uh, past uh, three, four years now developed the concept food without fields, where we uh, produce the biomass, either microbial or the plant cell biomass for the food applications. And also cosmetic ingredients based on the cell biomass or isolated fractions or, or pure compounds. Uh, I will now show you a couple of uh, success stories uh, which are now um, related to our industrial collaboration and again going uh, to these four different steps. Uh, organism development, we have a very good case uh, working with the Cargill uh, where we made a new strain uh, which produced um, more than 90 grams of lactic acid uh, bacteria lactic acid using the, the microorganisms. Uh, we have also the uh, collaboration with Mascoma where we uh, made the consolidated bioprocessing system uh, based on the yeast strain, what we uh, produced to them, and where we had also uh, very good cost benefits by reducing the use of enzymes by 50%. Another case is from the uh, cosmetic field, so sustainable production of uh, novel ingredients for cosmetic use. So we used uh, plant cell cells cultivated in the big bioreactors for the local uh, cosmetic company called Lumene. So that's the biggest cosmetic company in, in Finland. And then uh, this last example goes to friends, a spin-off, a company called Danov, where they have at their particular to produce ethanol up to the 15 fold to the original strain. So these are a few examples, uh, but I still want to highlight uh, this next one. Uh, which is an ongoing uh, collaboration, very large ongoing collaboration with the US company Diadic, where we developed them uh, the C1 fungi, so this is this Mycelophora thermophila uh, fungus strain to produce uh, therapeutic proteins uh, like vaccines, medicine, and, and other ones. And this has been really a very uh, 
good collaboration and we have been able to make uh, several uh, uh, breakthroughs with this collaboration. Uh, we also can uh, work in the, in the food related items, for instance, this is an example how we are very important birch tree to, to Finland and there is a lot of biomass which is uh, remaining uh, so that is we utilize this petuligenol from the birch park to create uh, by metabolic engineering and, and cells to produce the high value natural raspberry ketone flavor compound. So there are a lot of different ap applications what one can make and uh, we also believe that um, that also to complement the traditional agriculture, of course, to, to Poland agriculture is very important, not to replace the agriculture, but uh, to complement that, uh, to be able to be more uh, climate neutral and also to offer the food for the growing population. We think that the cellular agriculture where we use, uh, again, microorganisms, plants or, or animal cells, to produce different ingredients, not which is not in, uh, dependent on the field. So now at the end, I will give you uh, two more examples on the food side and also for materials. So because not not everything which can be done with the cellular agriculture is not related to to food production. So we can, as I mentioned before, we can already use microbial or cell mass as such as a new type of food. We have a lot of evidence of the nutritional benefits on, on this kind of ma material. Uh, but we can also produce uh, proteins, food proteins like oval albumin to replace the chicken uh, egg, chicken uh, egg white. And we have been able to show that it is equivalent to the to the natural one, and this has been expressed in the filamentous fungi and secreted to the growth media. So here is some comparison. I don't have time to go to the details, but how this uh, microbial or the fungal product produced uh, of albumin is behaving in different kind of uh, tests, also which like how it is whisked and so on. And my last example goes to the materials. Uh, there is a big need for the uh, bio-based materials. And we have had an, one example, which is called Korva. That is the world's first headphones produced by microbes. And that uh, last year got a lot of attention and we were having the, the biotechnological people from us and also from the University of Aalto, as well as designers to work in this project. So this is a prototype, it's not in the production as you may imagine. Uh, so there are the materials uh, and here is different components, uh, like what we had the PLA bioplastic, we had also in this uh, synthetic spider silk, we had the mycelium red leatherite material, hydrophobians to be this soft uh, part of this, uh, these things, and also the mycelium, which was uh, bacterial cellulose composite. The only thing which was not bio-based was the electronics in, in this application. And uh, just this example of one ingredient, so the mycelium leather, what we are now working also further on that. So we were able to produce uh, this type of material very short time uh, span and if we compare again if we get this letter from the animal it, there is a big difference in this now the challenge is how to produce it in in large scale and how uh, we can uh, improve the properties of this letter so now it is uh, about the same as the bad quality letter at the moment but we are working on that to be able to improve the, the quality and also the scaling up this system Okay, as a, as a summary, I would like to, I hope that I have been able to uh, very quickly to show you a couple of possibilities, what we can do. And at VTT, of course, we have a long experience. Uh, the, our institute is uh, almost 80 years old now, and we have been working in this field uh, and developing systematically different 
uh, microbial and plant cells and we are also valorizing many uh, byproducts to be able to to create new value to the to the products and our core is really to to utilize the new techniques like synthetic biology cellular agriculture and and all in all these cell factories to produce uh, different kind of goods and and products for humans and and also for animals so thank you very much for your attention Thank you. Thank you very much. That was very interesting. What do you think, Anjeska? Because Absolutely. basically, biotechnology, synthetic biology, it's... I, I always like to say that it's more disruptive than ICT and digitalization, because now we are really in the core of the, you know, uh, living, living systems and, and life. Very interesting to hear, and I'm pretty sure that there's a lots of common top topics and in, uh, cases of interest between BioNanoPart, VTT, Luke, Biotechnica, and also why not Woodley. So why not start to, to figure out that how you can you can take the benefits out of the Green Deal? Okay. Well, what do you think? Yeah, Anjusha? definitely. And uh, for example, you, there is such great examples that I would love to incorporate in my uh, circular hotspot, you know, case study section, because we have, we, we also promote like the, the best practices. And definitely I, I, I will like reach uh, Kirsi later and I would like incorporate and, and present as well, you know, for, for, for Poland, your, your case studies. And uh, yeah, it's, it sounds very interesting and innovative as well, I would say. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Good morning. Uh, my name is Zofia Wysokińska. I represent the Institute of Biopolymers and Chemical Fibers. I am also academic, um, professor of uh, economy at the University of Łódź, and my subject of teaching is the circular economy. Um, the aim of my presentation is to focus on the main technological results achieved in the field of the circular economy at two levels. The first one is the microeconomic level. So it means that I would like to present the achievements of the Institute of Biopolymers and Chemical Fibers economy. And then I would like also to present um, um, some interesting because it is the cooperation of our institute with the uh, city hall and also with the marshal office so it means at the regional level some uh, achievements of these two bodies in the field of circular economy um, let's go to next slide um, first of all i would like to present some achievements of the institute. So this institute conducts extensive studies in the field of economy through research on the industrial exploitation of unused poultry, abattoir um, waste in the form of feathers in order to obtain raw materials with added value chemical sector with special reference to keratin, bioplastic, retardant, coatings, not woven fabrics, and thermosetic organic resins. The obtained raw materials will be produced on the industrial scale and further used for the production of innovative bioproducts, such as fertilizers, which keratin is a source of nitrogen, food packaging made of synthetic polymers with the addition of feathers, technical coatings for textiles, breathable and fire thermosetting composites for applications in construction and transport. Additionally, uh, an integrated waste management plan will be developed to minimize the environmental impact on the waste. 
Of course, the Institute conducts also the research work aimed at processing keratin waste into a product with appropriate properties, which will be used as a component in the production of innovative utility materials. The developed innovative non woven will find wide practical applications, for example, as a biodegradable protective fabric for ski slopes or railway embankments. Moreover, during the process of natural decomposition, it will replenish nutrients in the soil. Very important uh, subject. Conducting this type of research on ensuring a second life for food waste will enable quick and cheap disposal of waste from power the burden of the environment throughout the whole product life cycle. Uh, the aim of another research conducted by this institute in the field of, of circular economy is the development of a biodegradable, environmentally friendly coating based on biopolymers made of renewable raw materials, protect soybeans against unfavorable weather conditions and against diseases caused by uh, fungal pathogens in the soil. Selected natural polymers will be also used to prepare the polymer composition used for coating the seeds. Nano and micro cellulose used to strengthen the shell will be obtained from waste biomass of the forest and food industry based on innovative technology combining biotechnological and mechanical processes. And um, it is very important that um, the Institute is also uh, engaged in research on construction of a prototype of an intelligent eco-returnable packaging, enabling its multiple use while maintaining environmental protection aspects. The idea behind this task will be to design packaging with an match materials suitable for recycling and usage of the raw materials as possible. The task will take into account the conditions of the final development of packaging after the end of its life cycle. So the topic is extremely important for our customer. The whole innovative research will also include elements of model logistic, modern logistics, access to comprehensive information about the shipment and minimization um, uh, very important in the uh, connected with some logistics processes. I would like also to stress that um, we have some cooperation um, with the regional or city level in different projects and um, the strategy of the region of Łódź is also connected of some um, economic and social aspects and environmental protection with special reference to circulation. And um, according to my opinion, of course, the even as part of projects named Local Government Center for Circular Economy and Internationalization of Enterprises, of Łódź, of course, in Łódź. The name is Green Hub. It is one of the most important projects at the regional level. And of course, the next one is also the success story entitled Circular Economy in Municipalities. And it is the case of smaller city, the case of Yelun. Um, I think that this project 
um, is related to the dissemination of experience in implementing the idea of a circular economy at the level of the municipality. Very important project. And the next one, what uh, I think they are also very important. They are projects sponsored within the um, Interreg Europe. And the first one um, at the regional level is the program LCA4 regions. And it is the, pro uh, the project um, aimed on improved environment and the resource efficiency through use of the life cycle assessment instruments for implementation of regional policy of the European Union. It is the first one. And the next one, connecting also with the circular economy at the regional level, and um, is the development of the circular economy through the improvement of regional policy instruments. Both are very important, and it was the first step um, related to the adjustment of this life cycle assessment instrument in uh, Woods at the regional level and in the region of Woods. And I think that uh, within this project, we have also um, uh, in our main street, uh, Piotrowska Street, the Sky Hub. It is very important um, uh, influence of this project um, uh, that were um, um, implemented at the regional and local level. And of course, um, I would like to thank you very much for your attention. And um, we are very, we cooperate also with um, many um, companies. Uh, we cooperate also with um, Azoti uh, in this field, and we cooperate also with um, uh, other small and medium-sized enterprises um, in the field of the circular economy. Once again, thank you for your attention and goodbye. But now we have the uh, open networking uh, sector, networking session. So I think we are uh, now end our presentation, our panel discussion. And now if you want to stay a little bit longer on the hopping platform, you can also go to this networking area and there is a place when you can randomly be connected with the other participant and, and talk about the potential cooperation. Or you can just write directly to the person who you think might be interesting for you or, or for field of uh, activities as well. So I think this for an hour, the hopping platform. So I think we, we will thank you, Agnes, for the main stage at the moment. And yes. thank you yes. very much for participation and be with us. So I, I would also like to thank you very much of, uh, of, of, of the effort what you have given for, for this event, because I think that, that this was a very successful event in terms of, 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 of the content. And also we learned a lot because, uh, I mean, uh, to organize this kind of events virtually and remotely, it's not that easy. Uh, but I, I think that we manage very well because at least for me, it seems that we really have this kind of uh, um, uh, con connection between e each other and, and we could um, change the ideas and, and, and everything in that sense went, went well. But um, this is going to be our future also because I think that we will more and more ha have these uh, virtual events and we are learning. So uh, from my side, thank you so much. And thank you, Anjoska. And thank you, Adam, for your contribution. And, and uh, I think that we, we made it well. Or what do you think? Yeah. Thank you, Anne. Thank you very much. And, and uh, I think see you somewhere on the future for more uh, circular bioeconomy yes. and yeah, sustainable. Yes production yes. of goods. And this is only a start because now we start uh, we start to collaborate and, and make our uh, initiatives, uh, joint initiatives. 
Yeah, so also write an, an, an email. If you also have some interest, we can support and we can try to connect with the right partners because, you know, we, we, we know a lot of already uh, stakeholders, so we can really support me or VTT probably as well. Uh, so please stay in touch, definitely. Yes. Yes. So thank you very right. much. So uh, I think... It's, no, it's the time to network. Yeah, so go to place a little bit and bye-bye. And, uh, have a nice day and have a nice weekend. Yeah, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.